Okay, in this one I'm going to be talking about separating the system uh, for pressure tests. Okay, let's say I have pressure tested the entire system as I did in the last video and it did not hold pressure. Okay, I looked for, you know, obvious places, uh, especially these service valves we got down here. I've looked in all these places, I couldn't find anything. So now I'm going to separate different parts of the unit so that I can find, uh, to have a better chance of finding a leak. This is especially good for small leaks uh, that take quite a while to uh, leak down. Uh, if I can have a uh, smaller area that I put pressure in, the pressure drops faster. Uh, there's also the additional benefit that if I say isolate the indoor coil, I can pressure it up a little higher than I would pressurize a system that actually had the compressor on it. Because some of the older compressors, now this is not the new 410As or nothing like that, this is the older systems, these compressors could not take, some of them could not take more than 150 pounds. And you do not want a compressor exploding, you will not survive the day. So, you would not put more than 150 pounds in one that was rated for 150. However, if I can isolate, say, the indoor coil on one of these things, I can pressurize it higher uh, because I don't have a large uh, container like a compressor can that could explode. I could maybe blow a hole in a pipe or something like that. but. Uh, generally what's going to happen is you'll just find the leak easier. So, okay, in order to do this, I'm going to isolate the indoor coil from the outdoor unit. Now, all, all that means is, is I'm going to go ahead and close off these service valves. Okay, once I've closed the valves off, then I have isolated the indoor unit, which is everything this way, these valves. Now, I've stuck these valves up. This is not normally how you'd see a set of valves in one of these things. I've done this kind of so it's easier to see. Uh, remember, none of the stuff I'm working on is really an air conditioner or a heat pump or anything. It's just stuff I'm working on to illustrate how stuff works. Okay, so when I close this valve, that closed off this from the indoor coil and line set. When I close this one off, it shut off the liquid line from the indoor coil. So now when I pressure up this system, I'm only going to be pressurizing the indoor coil and the line set. Okay, now I'm going to start getting the pressure up in this, uh, on this regulator. Okay, now I don't have the valves on, on this, uh, system yet and I'm going to go ahead and open the valve. Now you kind of notice from the way I did it before it's coming up way faster because it's a smaller volume and I'm exceeding the pressure limits that were normally put on this. This is up to you whether you do this or not. You can stick with the system pressure as noted on the model plate. Now I'm running up to about 250 pounds. Now I will generally do this with this type of system uh, because it's easier to find the leak. The only large volume spot you have is right here. These are usually rated at 500 pounds. So they should not have a problem with uh, having some of these higher pressures. And in fact, where that uh, dryer is right now, uh, 
you know, that would easily be 250 pounds under normal operating conditions. So, uh, you can go a little higher on some of these things. Uh, just remember, I would start out with a lower pressure first, if I thought I could get away with it, and then go to higher pressure later. Uh, don't get rambunctious and get up to 600 pounds or something these things. You will get yourself in trouble, and that's, uh, I mean, you can get killed from this stuff. Don't ever use oxygen. Oxygen is not a high-pressure gas to be used for pressure testing. It will explode. And it might not explode today, and it might not explode tomorrow, but it will explode sometime, and when it does, it does it with real authority. So, anyway, you're using a, an inert gas like, we're at like 250 pounds, and then I'm going to go ahead, shut off my uh, valves. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to shut off my inline valve there, and I'm going to uh, shut down this and. open my regulator so that I don't have pressure here and I'll bleed it off here. Okay. Because I don't want this thing, even if, if I did have a, if I had a leak somewhere that was leaking through, I don't want it bleeding into my uh, uh, manifold gauge set in any possible way. So this is off. And now I can go ahead and do my pressure test. If you want to use electronic with your pressure test, uh, you can do that, but you got to mix a little uh, refrigerant with the inert gas and you can use your electronic protector. And as before, we're going to uh, set the pressure, record it, and then we're going to start looking for leaks uh, in obvious places and see if we get a pressure drop. Probably about 15 minutes will do it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, reverse this and go to the outdoor coil. Okay, so far what I've done is I've pressurized the indoor coil but not the outdoor unit. I've closed the valves off here but I've only just pressurized the indoor coil. If I wanted to pressurize the inside and not pressurize the outside, then if I have taps inside the unit, most heat pumps do, uh, air conditioners probably will not, then I would go here, and I'm not going to do this this time because this is simple enough to do, is uh, with the valves closed off and I would hook up my gauge set right here and then I would pressurize the indoor uh, or the outdoor system irrespective of the indoor. Now remember when I'm pressurizing this I've got the compressor in here and if it is not a high pressure unit it's not acceptable to do high pressures in it then you can't go above that 150 pounds. Uh, but then you can pressurize this separately from pressurizing the indoor unit. Easier to find the leak. Easier to isolate where it is. And that's pressure testing. Uh, I will say that if you still can't get it uh, at that point, you've, you've separated it into two different uh, pressure zones and you still can't find where this leak is, it is leaking down, if you've isolated it to one or the other, then you can start doing other things. Uh, I could take the outdoor coil and I could isolate it. That simply means I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to cut the tubing on it. I'm going to crimp one side and put a pressure tap on the other side. Things like that. You can do that with the indoor coil also. And if you have to, you can do it with a line set too. You crimp it off, pressure it up. Separate it out as much as you have to. This can be pretty long and involved and expensive, and so you got to decide whether it makes sense to do it. 
But anyway, that is the pressure testing uh, of the uh, air conditioner or heat pump.